Next I'm going to show you uh, various ways in which the whole lathe system can be set up for doing different kinds of jobs and give you a rough idea of the scope or range of different things you can do. So this um, particular setup has a tool holder, which I'll show you later actually, um, which is a quick change tool holder. You turn the lever and you're going to take the tool out and replace it, but it's a metal cutting tool. Uh, and the chuck we've got on there is a three-jawed self-centering chuck. And this setup is used for most of your standard engineering things like uh, turning a cylinder or flattening the end of the work, which is called facing. This is the quick change tool post, tool post which uh, is not actually standard equipment on the Boxford lathe. It had a much lighter uh, device which uh, with a half moon piece of metal that the tool held, sat on and you could rock it up and down to center the tool which is quite easy to set up but is not rigid enough um, I find so uh, I, that was the main reason that I bought this um, quick change tool post from China $150 delivered to New Zealand wasn't too bad including six tool holder pieces um, and that included a um, knurling tool as well which you'll see later so the tool is actually a high-speed steel tip that I'm using uh, in the very tip of it. Um, and it's in a tool holder which is clamped into this uh, device with four grub screws. You clamp it down, fit it in there, and clamp it down, and once it's in there you can leave it in there indefinitely. Um, you can actually remove that um, part with the Allen screws and switch to a different tool very quickly by turning the big lever to release it. Uh, just behind the Allen keys, Allen screws, there is a tapered piece, and when you turn the handle, it moves up and down and spreads into the dovetail, which um, rigidly holds the, the tool holder. At the very top of this, you can see a screw uh, with a lock nut on it, and that actually determines the height of the tool uh, relative to the center. So you can put your center point in the chuck end or in the tailstock and bring it up to the tip of the tool and adjust that nut until the tool is right on central level. Uh, and once you've done that, each time you take the tool out and put it back in, it'll go back to exactly the same place again. The image I just showed you is for doing the outside of an object to make a cylinder, for example. What if you want to bore a hole inside the object? Well, this is a boring tool um, set up on the quick change tool post. And first you have to drill a very big hole in the center of the object big enough to fit this tool into. And then you can use this tool to cut the inside of a hole. You can see the tapered system here for the quick change tool post with its uh, taper that uh, slips up and down and really grabs that uh, tool holder very firmly. In the tailstock, you can see here a live center, which I also had imported from China. Um, a dead center is just a simple bar of steel with this point on the end that's used to hold work or to set, set up your, your tool so that it's centered properly. Uh, and that would fit straight into the Morse taper. This one is a live center and has ball bearing races in it so that this uh, center point actually spins around with your work very smoothly. And uh, that's quite nice to use. This is a knurling tool. Uh, it makes a crisscross pattern on the surface of your work. One wheel rotates and makes diagonal lines to the left, and the other one makes diagonal lines to the right, and between the two of them you end up with a criss pattern, criss crisscross pattern uh, on the work, as shown in this example here. This is actually a post I made for spinning metal, which we'll see later. This is a fairly standard collet system, which I also imported from China, quite, very cheaply actually. Um, and it replaces a chuck for handling, handling uh, very small objects, very nicely centered uh, and securely. Um, it has a sleeve in the center that holds the device, and the, it comes with about seven different sleeves of different sizes, so um, each sleeve is used for a different sized object. So it's a little less convenient to use than a self centering chuck that way, but actually it's um, very, very good for holding very small objects. In this case I've got a little a grinding tool in there and I used it for grinding this one of those tool holders which didn't fit in the quick change tool holder I was just showing you uh, and I wanted to grind it down so I bolted the tool holder down onto the cross slide 
uh, set this grinder going and slid it to work underneath, backwards and forwards underneath the grinder until I got it down to the right thickness and it made a lovely smooth ground surface on the, uh, on the tool holder so it would be held nice and firmly. Here I've got the lathe set up for wood turning. Wood turning makes an awful mess throwing stuff all over the place but uh, it is good for certain jobs and quite fun. This is a piece of elm I've been cutting uh, for a specific job. You can see the uh, chisel sitting on top of a tool rest which is just a bar of 5mm steel uh, with various holes drilled in it for some flexibility and location and it screws into another piece of metal which goes inside the T-slot in the um, cross slide. So that just gives me a tool rest and I spin this at 600 or 1300 RPM and just shape up the, the wood the way I want it. Uh, I don't have a photo of the way the wood is mounted uh, on the chuck, but the chuck itself uh, screws on with an 8 thread per inch thread. That's a Whitworth thread actually. Uh, and so you unscrew the chuck and you can put a just a plain metal plate that screws on there, uh, which is actually designed for turning between centers, but I drilled holes in it so that I can screw it onto the back of a piece of wood and then just screw that whole thing onto the, onto the spindle thread and away you go with your wood turning. This might look like a hat, but it's actually a mold or pattern that I'm using for spinning copper to make a copper bowl, uh, which you'll see next. This is a setup I rigged up for spinning copper. On the uh, tool post, I've got the same piece of um, 5mm steel with holes drilled in various locations, and in it, you've got one, I've got a post in the vertical position. That's the same post you saw a few minutes ago with the crisscross knurling pattern on the end of it. So I made that up and it's kind of jury rigged for doing the spinning. Uh, it's just used to le as a fulcrum to lever against the, with this uh, stainless steel rod. Actually you can use any kind of rod of course. Um, so we make this wooden pattern of the shape that we want the metal to become and we just get a plain flat sheet of metal, copper or aluminum will do. Um, and just push it up against the surface of your wooden mold and then you carefully um, press firmly with this rod and force the copper to take the shape of the wood underneath um, while it's spinning at about 600 rpm and you end up with some rather nice looking objects. Um, I'm building a steam engine which we might talk about later and this is a side effect and ended up with some bowls as well. Let's go back to the previous picture. Uh, I've got a, um, what's a rather like a center holding the copper against the wooden pattern. Uh, and that's made out of an old skateboard wheel. So it's got a ball bearing raised inside and spins around along with the work. So it doesn't create a lot of friction. Um, but it does leave a part in the center that I can't get to to um, adjust the curvature. So you'll notice that the bowls and things that are produced have a, an area in the center that hasn't been spun properly. In this photo you can clearly see some notches uh, silhouetted against the bench top which are the selector positions for the gearbox. When I got this lathe um, this uh, selector thing was damaged and I needed to make a new one. Here I've set up a milling tool. Actually I was on vacation in Geneva, Switzerland when uh, I came across a um, street market where they're selling a whole lot of tools that were used for watchmaking and clock making and I picked up a whole set of uh, milling tools and that's one of them and I had to make a mandrel to actually hold the milling tool so you can see in the chuck a cylindrical bar uh, and the very end of it is turned to be just the right size for the inside hole on the um, milling tool and it'll screw just to hold it in place so that's your milling system then the next problem was to hold the work securely while it's being milled and uh, I've got a thick piece of steel that I was able to mount on the uh, cross feed and on the tool holder system uh, on, the t on the T joint piece and it's held in with the same system as I had for the other bar of metal um, and I drilled and tapped a couple of holes in it so that I could screw a strip of steel securely onto this and once I had it securely held then I could just uh, move the milling tool along by eye and cut out these slots I needed. And the final show, photo actually shows the end result. 
And finally, to repair the lathe, I had to make a new handle for the crossfeed. Actually, to be perfectly honest, I had a big problem when I tried to move this lathe that weighs 380 pounds and put straps around it, forgetting that the underside of the lathe bed was sharp. And although I had six different ropes going around it, each knotted separately, I cut through all of them all in one go, and bam, the whole thing fell on the ground and it bent this cross feed, uh, damaged the um, gear selector I was just showing you, um, and uh, also damaged the handles for the 40-speed um, gearbox. Uh, so I've been able to repair all of those things now, and this is the repaired um, cross feed handle. Actually, you might be interested in how we did move the lathe in the end. I looked at the possibility of t disassembling the whole thing and decided that it might put things out of alignment. I didn't really want to do that, so I wanted to move it as a whole piece. Uh, I actually had to move it out of my father's garage, and to do that I rented an engine lifter, uh, which was able to fit into the garage. The problem with the forklift is that it's too high to fit inside the, the garage. Um, so that was the solution. And uh, apart from dropping it, it did work. I moved it from there to Kiwi Fruit Orchard, where a friend looked after it for a year or two uh, in his uh, in his warehouse, and he had a forklift to lift it, so that was fine. Uh, and then we moved it from his place to our new house and uh, put it in the garage. And this time, I was trying to think how I was going to lift it up onto this bench top. I had it on the floor of the garage. Uh, somebody said, call the fire brigade. So I called the fire brigade and the fire chief came around and had a look. Said, yeah, we can do this. Uh, and later he came back with six burly guys and they pick it up and say, one, two, three, hoof, and put it straight up on the bench top. No problem. And that gave them a nice big donation for their beer fund.